Yo, GPJ here. Quick video today. This MOC picked my account apart. As a jingliu-less free-to-play player, I am ashamed and I will now commit Sudoku. So, I started clearing the newest patch of MOC recently and long story short, I got pounded and not in a good way. Clearly, the newest Memory of Chaos gave me a deeper understanding of my account, and that deeper understanding is, is that it sucks when it comes to ice content, and also very much L plus ratio on the relics, and its weaknesses that I hard-headedly ignore because, well, I just don't like Jing Liu, okay? Before I get into the tips and tricks for you so that you don't end up like me, let me explain the buff explanation for Memory of Chaos. This is Memory of Chaos Floor 12 Review. Now, the Memory of Chaos buff, which I can't really say because it's too long, favors characters that can attack frequently. Now, this is perfect for follow-up attack teams, while also increasing backloaded damage for certain units, like our General and Acheron, and also some dot compositions. Make sure to do your DPS's ultimate last when they already have reached the 6 max stacks to maximize the damage taken. Second is when you're playing debuffs.coms, i.e. the Acheron and the Ratio teams, every single attack you do counts as a debuff. The units that cannot apply debuffs normally can contribute to the debuff application as well. However, Remember that it will not count again as a debuff when it reaches the 6 maximum stacks, so plan the attacks accordingly, or plan your basic attacks accordingly. If you're using someone like a sustain or a harmony that doesn't really uh, have debuffs application. Third, if you defeat the first half while at the same time reaching the 6 maximum stacks, the carryover explosion, which deals max percentage of health by the way, will deal damage in the second half while also resetting the trigger count for the 6 maximum stacks. Perfect to double dip in the damaged side of things if it felt like you were lacking in that department. Plus, you know, the extra damage is always nice. Now, let's start with the top side first half. The Quantum and Lightning, very very frightening me, Galileo. The enemy lineup, we have the Fat Ice Guy and the Blue Barney. Simply put, Go to the dinosaur as fast as you can. This gentleman has one of the highest damage reduction when it's not broken. Also, the Blue's Clues T-Rex has one of the highest AoE damage that came from his stacking blaze mechanic. Essentially, when it reaches 5 stacks, it will have the maximum damage, therefore committing your team entirely and sending them into the Shadow Realm. Break his weakness as fast as you can. and. If it's possible, break the ice weakness guy at the same time as well. Also, the ice guy is just, you know, the standard summon minions type deal. No big deal. If you have Ho-Ho, you can cleanse the ice debuff immediately at every single time your character takes a turn. Having a fire support like an Asta, like a Topaz, or like a Gallagher can help break the ice guy and Kokolia really quickly if you don't have a suitable lightning DPS. Speaking of Kokolia, let's talk about the second half. Now, it's the same deal. Break the T-Rex as, as fast as possible. Kokolia will do her hardest to make you commit Sudoku by freezing her ass off. But, you know, if you have a well-built sustainer, like, you know, a Venturine, a Hoho, a Locha, or even a 4-star, like a Gallagher, you can ignore her anyway, and you'll do fine. If you're planning to play Fu Xuan against Kokolia, time her ultimate and HP recovery accordingly. Do not get to half health when Kokolia is about to use her blizzard or when the T-Rex is about to use his super buff spikes in the ground. You will die, as I have experienced many many times. Your composition will be different, so use and plan accordingly. If you can kill them without having needing a sustainer, then you know. Anyway, let's start with the bottom side of the first half. Ice DPS lovers, you're winning. Now, the enemy is the Vine Lady and the Fat Cop. Target whoever posts the most threat for your lineup first. For my lineup, I went with Clara, Locha, Tingyan, and Bronya. For my case, I went to the Lady first due to her HP limit debuff, and I can weather through the Fat Guys, the Fat Tax Guys attacks 
If you have a dedicated physical DPS or a breaker like Clara or Luca, they'll shine in this fight as their physical capabilities are useful to everyone except the fat guy. Jing Liu, Yan Qing, or Misha is your best ice DPS for this floor. For the dedicated freezer, you can either go with Misha again, or you can go with one of your sustainers like Japart or March 7 to minimize the, the enemy's DPS window. Speaking of freeze, it will come in handy when we're talking about this gambling time aventurine. Now, similar strat as the first half, freeze aventurine during his first turn before he goes and does his second turn. If you freeze him and he'll succeed it, he'll be delayed and then you can keep your DPS window maximized. Hypercarry Clara works really well as it draws aggro from aventurine to Clara every single time. Clara herself can get targeted most of the time for the gambling game and you'll win provided you have the skill point necessary to do the skill to AoE the dice and win the gambling game. Or you know, you just get lucky and do the basic attack and just roll 6. The second half of the aventurine fight, make sure to have the resources and keep everyone's health and or shield at max. If you know you can win the gamble by using the ult, then use it immediately. You'll get it back after you win the gamble and you'll also gain increased damage. For the losers, make sure that their HP and shields are topped up because otherwise, there are many cases where I get one shot. Luca enjoyers, like I said earlier, who are gonna be fighting, are gonna like fighting this guy due to his physical weakness, making him one of your best bet to break his weakness quickly and to deal tremendous toughness break. Now we got that other way. I wanna talk about my opinion regarding the new Memory of Chaos patch as a Jing Liu-less free-to-play and as someone that his only ice DPS is Herta, it definitely felt more like both a DPS check and a toughness breaking check especially in the first half, more than the second half. The blue dinosaur is a real ass of a fight, even more so than Aventurine in my opinion. The safeguard mode of that bastard really throws a wrench in my <laughs> otherwise perfect lineup, but nevertheless, it always took me 3 cycles on average, so it's not too bad. It felt almost unfair because, oh no, you're doing all this damage and yet this guy takes half the damage. Why the hell is this possible? Well, in short answer, they want you to invest in multiple toughness breaking team. The second half of the Aventurine is heaven for Ice DPS enjoyers. The Jing Liu, the Yang Qing, the Misha. Well, certainly not for me, as of now, my attempt at Hyper Cali Hyper Carry Clara is still not enough. Also, I guess the Memory of Chaos is due for a, a massive power spike, both in terms of DPS and in terms of survivability, due to everyone and their grandpa having Acheron and the developers pushing the agenda of having a well-built sustainer. Hey, but hey, if you can kill them without any sustain, then fuck me, I guess. Overall, these are all my thoughts. Let me know what y'all think in the comments below. And also, before I end today's video, I would just want to say thank you so much for the support at the last video. We've managed to hit 200 subscribers. I can't thank any of you guys enough for the continual support. And I will do my best to make sure that we get to 1,000 before the second half of 2024. As always, Thank you all so much for watching and see you around. Bye bye!